jamming out to music that only he can hear. Oh my god. Let's let's start the video now, shall we? Oh, hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video. I am doing the end of the year tag. So this tag was created by Ariel Bissette on her channel and I will have the link to her video for this year down below. So yes, it is kind of late to be doing this tag. A lot of other people had them going up in October or early November. And I and I know why because it still it has questions uh, pertaining to like the end of the year and not just like the start of next year like there are questions about finishing but um you know I just didn't quite get there but I'm there now so let's just do it I'm trying to also hide the fact that my only clean mug is a Harry Potter mug I I do not support JK Rowling and her views but I still have the mug and at the moment it's the only clean mug so Hey. So the first question is, are there any books that you have started and still need to finish? And my answer is, have you met me? Of course, there are books that I have started and haven't finished. I have four books that I have started and not finished. And at the moment, I'm on a break because I'm participating in a readathon. So the first book that I would like to talk to you about is How Things Fall Apart. I started this late September. I'm a good chunk of the way through. I am I'm 80 pages into it and I'm enjoying it and I want to try and finish it before the end of the year. The next book that I have started is Curse of the Spectre Queen and this is by Jenny Elder Moak. I started this one I think in uh, I bought it in August. I read like the first chapter as soon as I bought it because that's just kind of what I do. Um, and then I put it down, and then I read it a little bit for like two days, and now I'm doing a readathon, so it's it's not being read at the moment. Uh, but I would love to finish this one before the end of the year. This one I am also 80 pages in. Wow, it's quite the trend being 80 pages in. Then the third book, the third book that I have is Where the Briars Sleep by Emma Bavin, and I got this book. I got it before it came out. Oh, that's what it was. So I got the book before it came out. However, I got the uncorrected version. Um, and so when I learned that plot holes had been fixed from the version that I had, I wanted to stop and wait. And then I didn't get this version until July, August, September? I don't know. Like early fall, I think it was. So then I started over and already there were scenes that were different so I'm glad that I started over um but I am 90 pages into it and I want to keep reading it it's really good spooky season read so I'm a little sad that I didn't finish it in spooky season but at this point I also just kind of want it read um so I'm probably gonna try and finish this sooner rather than later or rather than waiting for next year's spooky season because I've started it twice. And then the final book that I have started and not finished, I am 250 pages in and it's Anna of Cleve. I started this January, no I started it January 2020. Yeah, freshman year is January 2020. I started this January of 2020 and I'm only like halfway through. I want to read it. The thing is, is that right now I'm at a very politically heavy plot point and it's slightly difficult for me to get through something so political, but I also want to keep reading this. So there we go. Those are the four books. That one's nice and chunky. Uh, book number two. Do you have an autumnal book to transition to the end of the year? Yes, I did. <laughs> So the two books that I had that were somewhat autumnal, somewhat wintry that I read during the transition 
were Seasons of the Storm by Ella Cosimano and The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. Uh, both of these deal very heavily with seasons. Um, so like this one is the idea that seasons are actually people who are hunting each other. So when it's fall, um, the fall person is walking around and enjoying the fall weather. And then when it gets to the end of the season, they release the person who is winter and then they have to hunt and kill fall. Um, and then it becomes winter. And so uh, we follow two main characters. One is winter and the other is spring. Um, but I feel like we get more from the perspective of the winter person than we do from the spring person. So I, this was very nice to transition into winter. But it is probably a better book for transitioning from winter to spring. But then The Nature of Witch takes place over the course of the year. Um, but it starts off transitioning from fall to summer. No, from summer to fall. And then the majority of the book is like fall to winter. And then you get a little bit of spring, a little bit of summer. And then it starts off or it ends going back into autumn again. Um, but I thought that overall this was a very autumnal book. Even like in the spring and summer you, you just never let go of that like cozy nature witchy vibe uh which fit in really well with the autumn season so these that was a good book for the transition that has already happened question number three is there a new release that you're still waiting for uh no i don't think so um i wasn't all the releases that I can think of that I am waiting for are early next year and I will have a video coming out somewhat soon of all the books that are coming out in the first half of next year that I'm excited to read. Uh, for the most part, I don't think there was really any in December that I was looking forward to, so I'm good. <laughs> Question number four, what are three books I want to read before the end of the year? Well, first off, I want to finish the readathon that I'm doing, then I want to finish these four books if I magically have time within the last like couple weeks of December, I would love to read Fearless by Tim Lott. Um, I was literally getting ready to set up for this video and I saw this book and I was like, wait a minute, what's that book? And I realized that the last time I was home, my friend had given this to me to borrow to read and now that I'm about to go home again, I realize, oh, I should read this so I can give it back to her. So I would love to read this before the end of the year so I can give it back. And then I would love to read The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the second book in the Inheritance Game trilogy. Um, I would love to read this before the end of the year because the next book, the last book is coming out next year and I read the first one and I like it so I want to not forget what happens. Um, so I would love to read this, plus I love the color of the cover. And I think it's a good cozy winter read. The final book that I would love to try and squeeze in December this year yet is School for Good and Evil, A World Without Princess by Sunan Chainani. This is the second book in the series and it deals heavily with fairy tales and I think that's such a wonderful winter read. I'm a little nervous because it's a little, it's a little thick but I'm also pretty sure this is a middle grade, so like the writing is a little bit easier to go through and I could read it a little bit faster, so I would love to get through it, however I touch. I'm not sure that's gonna happen, but we'll see, you never know. Number five, is there a book that could come out and shock you as being your favorite of the year? I don't think so. I mean, I'm excited to read all the books that I'm going to read, but I don't see any of them as favorite potential um just because they're either like continuations of series or books that i'm like hey, like yeah i'm gonna read it i have it i'm gonna read it um so i don't think there's anything that is going to like shock me or surprise me that being said i don't actually know what my favorite book of the year is i have yet to round up all of my five star reads and go through them and be and see which one like sparks a whole like oh my gosh yes um that would that is how I'm choosing my favorite of the year is by which one I have the most emotional reaction to um so I don't know what that is so I don't know if anything could come and surprise me but I don't think any of these are going to be five star reads 
so therefore I don't think they'll surprise me and be my favorite of the year. And the last question is question six. Have you started making any plans for 2022? Uh, kind of. Like, I don't have hardcore set in stone plans. I'm kind of in this mindset of like, I'm just starting to plan my reading goals video that I'm going to post next year. So I'm kind of thinking of like, you know, what readathons I want to participate in uh, and kind of what my reading goals are. But in terms of like plans, I don't have anything planned. I would love to, but not really. But I am starting to think about next year's reading and whatnot. So yeah, watch out for that video. And the best way to watch out for that video is by subscribing. And hitting the bell so that you're notified especially because now, right now I'm posting four videos every week in December so you should definitely hit the bell so that you could be notified when those videos go up um, otherwise I normally post videos on Sundays and Wednesdays and you should definitely like this video give it a thumbs up if you if you liked it I would love to hear some of your answers down in the comments below and I would love to chat with you Otherwise, feel free to follow me on all of my bookish social media, which is in the description below. I would love to be friends and see what you guys are reading and get some of my recommendations from you as well. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't really have anything else to say other than I will see you in the next video. But until then, I wish you happy reading.